what I call a stone. How are you doing over there, Major? You know, I sure do appreciate your spelling me like this. Whenever you're ready for me to take over, you just holler, you hear? You were kind enough to offer me a lift back to my base, Sergeant. The least I can do is drive a while, isn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. You know, this ain't no B-17. I mean, no matter how fast we taxi, we ain't never gonna take off. I hope. Well, that's true, Sergeant, but on the other hand, we ain't never gonna crash, either. <laughs> we ain't? Well, why not, sir? Because I'm immortal. <laughs> One day the CO called me in and he said, Major Denver, son, you really are in luck. You've been chosen to go back to the States and deliver a combat evaluation on current flight tactics. How about that? I said, well, I prefer to stay with my own crew if you don't mind, sir. And he said, here's your hat, Major, and you right now, you hear? And I said, yes, sir, General Savage, goodbye, sir. And my boys, they volunteered to go up with a new pilot. And they got it over Liège just about the time I was landing in Washington. Major, I, 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 I sure am sorry. So now you see why I never worry, Sergeant. I'm just like the little kid that Pipe Piper left outside the mountain, right? <laughs> All alone, wondering where everybody went. Safe as can be. Twelve o'clock high. A QM production. Starring Robert Lansing. Also starring Frank Overton and John Larkin. With guest stars Gary Lockwood and Nancy Kovac. And special appearance by Hazel Court as Liz. Tonight's episode, Appointment at Liège. Call for a bomber at 8,000 feet. I assume he meant 18. I meant 8. Wiley, the Nazis put up enough flak over Maastricht to walk on. I get chewed to pieces at 20,000 feet. Now, who recommended this action? Some bright-eyed shave tail back at the Pentagon? No. Ed Chandler. Was he drunk? Well, let's ask him. Colonel Chandler. Yes, sir. Colonel, what makes you think that the Maastricht rail yards are worth 30 to 50 percent loss in the aircraft? Well, uh, in the first place, General, I doubt that there'd be a 30 to 50 percent loss. Oh, and what do you estimate the probable loss would be at 8,000 feet, especially with green crews? With a full complement of experienced squadron commanders leading, sir, I judge the losses could be kept under 20%. Well, where do you suggest I find these veteran leaders, Colonel? Well, I, uh, I assume that the general would go along, for one. That's one. And then there's Major Cobb and Major Denver. Major Denver isn't due to arrive from the States until the middle of next month. I was under the impression these orders were cut for tomorrow morning. Well, they are, sir. Major Denver landed in England this afternoon. He's on his way to Archbury now. Well, why wasn't I informed of this? You were, sir. That information was sent to your office just as soon as we received it. Will there be anything else, General? No. Nothing else. Thank you, General. Thank you, sir.
Wiley, do you have a towel around here anywhere? I'd like to wipe some of the egg off my face. Comes well armed, doesn't it? Oh, it does. I mean, we'd come out on the side. Was I ever that bright-eyed and bushy-tailed? Oh, yes. When? Well, the day I asked you to take over the 918th from Colonel Davenport. Well, I still don't like 8,000 feet. But if Gus Denver gets back in time for briefing, we're in business. <laughs> Anybody home? Gus! <laughs> I... You know, I almost half thought Wing was kidding when they told me you were cutting well, your leaves short. I couldn't stay away from those powdered eggs and sawdust sausages any longer, Harv. Uh -huh. How's the general? Oh, he's fine, just fine. Think he's got work for me to do? Plenty of targets left to bomb? There's never any shortage of those. I, uh, I tell you, I, I feel like a prelim boy who's walking to the arena with his gloves already on. Come to fight, Harv. Maybe we'll call the new bird Gus's revenge, huh? Liege. I don't know what it's worth, Gus, but I can promise you they never knew what hit them. Joe Cobb was right alongside. Yeah. Joe wrote me a nice letter. Nice letter. It was the first I heard. Oh, man. I thought I was gonna fall down right in that hotel lobby and die. I just kept thinking all night. All nine of them. Great, huh? I don't have to worry about a peacetime career. I can just hire out as a mourner at Irish Wakes. I could quite a Laurel and Hardy picture. Well, they become more like a family than a crew after a while. Yeah, I guess that's it. I, I never had anybody else. No one? No, nothing. Didn't I ever tell you about my name, Major? No. This will tear you to bits. Police found me when I was about two hours old. Stuffed in a garbage can in an alley back of a rooming house. So uh, they took me to the county hospital and uh, they had to put something on that registration card. So they named me for the month and the city. It was August, it was Denver. <clears throat> so, uh, anyhow, one of the churches took me in for a while and 
When the county started putting me in those uh, foster homes, I must have been in 15, 20 different places before I finally ran away. And I picked hops in Oregon, cotton in Alabama, rode the rails. Always by myself. Until Langley. Thought that grab you? Gus, let's go find you a bunk and then drop by the club. Harv. You hear most of the rumors around here. When do you figure we'll be heading for Liège again? Can I give you a piece of well-meant advice, Gus? Sure. You've had a rough blow, no doubt of it. But don't hold on to it too long. I won't, Harvey. All I'm asking is a chance to drop one string of bombs on those particular anti-aircraft batteries. I've got an appointment over Liège, and I mean to keep it. Just make sure it's not with a Nazi gun. Why? Would that be so bad? Table. I want to call the main gate and have him tell General Savage you're here when he checks in. I know you're here. Ten minutes. Crazy. Lots of new faces, Joe. Yeah, lots of new faces, Gus. Hey, come on over for a minute. Gus? Major Denver? Lieutenant Charlie Vale? How are you, sir? Lieutenant Jake Benning. How do you do, sir? Benning. Charlie's a pilot, Jake's a bombardier, both on a sign. On a sign. Well, good, good. Maybe we'll be fine together tomorrow. Well, that'd be a mighty fine break for us, sir. Yes, sir. We've heard a lot about you, Major. With you flying that bird, I'd feel I had a pretty good chance. Can we buy you a drink, sir? The lieutenant will have to take a rain check on that. She works in meteorology. Her name is Irene Cooper. Dance, Lieutenant. Flying Date's a very jealous man, Major. He's bigger than you are. Nothing to lose? No, nothing. I think he came back here to die.
seen two younger and younger, aren't they, Major? Yes, sir. A couple of missions and they'll grow up fast. Provided they have a chance to grow up at all. Yes, sir. You know, Major, having a milk run like this gives us an opportunity to let these kids get their toes wet. Let's take full advantage of it. Keep a tight squadron, no stragglers, no hotshot tactics. Understand? Of course, sir. When we get back, we'll have a drink together. I want to hear about that uh, tour of yours. Right, General. All right, Sergeant. Let's go. Pilot to crew, ten thousand feet, go on oxygen. Ten thousand, sir. Pilot to crew. Pilot to crew. Hit your oxygen. And boys, keep your eyes peeled. Bomber to pilot! Bomber to pilot! Fighters! Fighters! Two o'clock high! Oxygen. Radio to pilot. Radio to pilot. Sir, there seems to be a malfunction with the oxygen. Pilot to radio. Pilot to radio. Now the intercom's out. Get back and check it out. Operators hit bad, sir. Can't breathe. No oxygen makes it worse. All right. We'll take her down. Blue Arrow 1 to leader. Check Green Arrow 1. Is he in trouble? One. Denver, what are you doing? Pull it up. Denver, acknowledge. Pull it up. We do the green arrow two. Take over. Close up your formation. Clack, sir. Shouldn't we be going away from it? Lesson number one, Charlie. When a rabbit's in trouble, he heads for a bramble patch. That's a target of opportunity. The Jerry's won't follow us in there. What happens when we come out of it? We belly down low enough so they can't dive on us without hitting bottom. And we pray for the spits to show. Sir. All right, 
it, Charlie. He's got it. Your airplane, Jake, right? Yeah, Denver. On a milk run? But what happened? He broke the formation. I never saw anything like it. I thought he wanted those 109s to catch him. The general, I'm sure that he never... Let's go, sir. We've got our radio on their first pass. I headed for a flak area to shake the fighters and dump our bomb lock. Took a direct hit in the nose. Spitz escorted us home. I'm dead. Three. Radio man, navigator, and co-pilot. Why did you drop out of formation, Major? My radio operator was hurt bad, sir. He couldn't breathe. I had to find an altitude more... He had his oxygen mask. There was a malfunction in the oxygen system, sir. Brief flight checklist. Section E, item 9. Snap it out, Major. Snap it out. Item nine. Check condition of oxygen mass. Check main oxygen system for proper pressure, sir. General, I had an inexperienced co-pilot. Had is the correct word, Major. Don't worry, it won't happen again. You're grounded until further notice. General, that's not Next bad. time you try to kill yourself, Denver, you find the bridge someplace and you jump off it alone. Those nine men you tried to take with you today might have had other plans. Let's go. Sorry, Lieutenant. Uh, Major, do you ever get the 
feeling if you and I were the only two people left on the earth and you started east and I started west that we'd end up in the middle of the Sahara colliding. Lieutenant, let me buy you a fresh drink. Oh, I think that'd be only fair. Bad mission. Well, I guess that depends on your point of view, Lieutenant. I was accused of killing three men, driving another crazy, and being a little batty myself. And all the time I had it figured I'd save seven lives. Barney. Two whiskeys. Hey, that sounds good, Dan. I'll have two whiskeys, too bad. I'm on the road to perdition. I've got to keep the skids grease. Actually, what it is, is, uh, is I'm running away from life. I got you. Well, you wouldn't believe the thousands of dollars it cost my father to learn that from a psychiatrist. I could have told him when I was ten, if he'd asked me. <laughs> so you joined the Air Force to escape, huh? Mm. Yes, only, uh, it's a big fraud, Major. This really isn't the army we're in. It's just another boarding school with another set of teachers and another headmaster. And there's really nothing to do but to keep on playing hooky, is there? To all us truants. You know, if I don't get off this, this base, I'm gonna explode. I uh, went to the hospital to see my bombardier and they said, Major, come back at five. If I could commandeer a jeep, would you like to play hooky for about an hour and a half? I don't know, I've never run away with anybody before. You, wait here. Is he in, Harvey? Well, uh... Yes, sir. Frank, I just read your combat reports. I can't tell you when I've been more impressed. Nor I, General. That was a magnificent display of heroism and initiative on Denver's part. You were quite right in wanting to wait for him. I'm, uh, I'm sure we all feel a lot easier about the Maastricht run now. What would you recommend, Frank? Silver Star? Well, that's your department, of course. I'm sure you'll do the correct thing. Yes? I grounded him. A uh, colonel. Yes, sir. Uh, General Savage, I, uh, I wonder if you'd excuse me. I want to check with your tower. I can think of a number of explanations for this. And I can't make sense out of any of them. Under heavy ground crew, he was repeatedly ordered before takeoff to stay with the formation by choosing to fight his own private war. He endangered his airplane on the lives of his men. I consider him currently unfit for duty. What private war? Well, Denver's old crew was shot down over the age while he was on special duty. He seems to feel he should have been with them. I don't think he's going to be happy until he is. When did you become a qualified psychiatrist? Wiley, a command. No, or... let's follow this thing through, Frank. Denver reported a malfunction in his oxygen system. What would you have done under the circumstances? I would have found the malfunction before takeoff and corrected it. Sure. I'm sure. Let's talk about Maastricht, shall we? 
General, I am officially requesting a postponement of the Maastricht action until... Refused such officially! Well, I cannot, I cannot sanction that raid until I have two qualified squadron leaders behind me. You have two qualified squadron no, leaders? In my judgment, I don't. Then perhaps you should question your judgment. No. No, you can question my judgment. Staff can question my judgment. If you find it faulty, you can replace me. But as long as I am in command of this base, I will make the decisions that seem right and proper to me. I will stand or follow by them. Was one of your command decisions that you're still capable of command? That was the first one, General. And it looks like we've come to a deadlock, doesn't it? How long do you intend to keep Denver grounded? Until I'm convinced that he can be trusted with the lives of his men. General Savage, the Maastricht raid is still on. It will be run as soon as the seating lifts over eastern Belgium. It will be run by the 918th, with every available squadron leader in the air. And when the time comes, it will be run whether you are commanding this group or not. General. Any old battle plans you want to spill? How did you get on the base? Oh, I just told the man at the gate that I was a spy and I gave him my phone number and he said, go right to heaven. Was that wrong? No, of course not. What's the matter, General? No time for chit-chat. Hmm? My brother had to pick up some papers for the air ministry, so he said, would you like to ride along with me? And I said, yes, of course. We both decided that this wasn't the day for a widow to stay at home and stare at the walls. Miles was killed in North Africa a year ago today. Oh, yeah. I'm cursed with an absolutely infallible memory for anniversaries. <laughs> I can even remember the hour of the afternoon that we met. Yes, so can I. Oh, I bet you can't. Well, yes. I, well, I know it was yes. in August. Oh, August. That was more like the last time you telephoned. Well, I'm sorry, Liz. I've been meaning to phone you, but I... I know. There's a war on. I'm sorry. I really do know. Look, you're busy, so I... No, no, no. I'm well, I was just going over to the hospital to see a young bombardier by the name of Benning. He can wait. Fine. Hmm. If you play your cards right, General, I may buy some of your secrets. All right, what do you want to know? I wish you could tell me. Tell you what? What the new trouble is. I decided that one of my men was self-destructive. So I grounded him. Save his life and the lives of his crew. But I did it on a hunch, Liz. I, I, it's a personal opinion. If I'm wrong, I should rescind the order. Frank, why were you put in this job? Wasn't it so that you could exercise your opinions? Aren't hunches based on experience? So, if you continue to do what you think is right, would that be destroying yourself? Or remaining true to yourself? Tazzle me, you're a very astute kid for a spy. <laughs> That's what I like about you. You sweep away the cobwebs like a good broom. General, <laughs> you don't often pay compliments, but when you do, they're memorable. Good broom.
Yes, sir. Sir. He uh, he looks good, doesn't he, sir? Yeah, sure. To tell you the truth, sir, I don't know why they're keeping me in bed. You yeah, like a million dollars. Now they say they're going to send me home. Well, sir, I just can't figure that out at all. I mean, I sure haven't had my 25 missions yet. Tell me the doctors know it. Sir, I think perhaps Lieutenant Benning should rest for a while. talk to you, sir. It's important. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, Major, go ahead and talk. <clears throat> sir, there's a a rumor around the 918th is going to make a run in the Maastricht-Liège area as soon as the weather lifts. I want to go on that mission. Oh, yeah. I bet you do. Sir, uh, I don't know what's led you to decide that I'm some kind of a, a crazy menace in the air. But I can assure the general all I want to do now, all I ever wanted to do, sir, is to fight a war. That's agreed, Major. The question is against whom? Against whom? Against whom? Against the enemy, sir. Against the murderers who wiped out the only family I ever had. Tell me something, Major. In your own secret opinion, could one of those murderers be you? Me? What would have happened if you'd been in that airplane instead of on special duty? Well, I... I don't know. You should do. No. Of course you do. You would have either saved them or you would have gone down with them, right? Look, General, uh, I don't blame myself. Mm. Look, General, you, you just don't understand. You don't know what those nine men meant to me. My obligation was to be with my... Your obligation, Major, is the same as every other pilot's in this Air Force. That is to do your job and stay alive if you can. That is your responsibility to the men in your crew, to your squadron, to the group you're part of. When you fail in that responsibility, you're of no use to me anymore, or anybody else. If you say you lost a family, all right. You've lost them, it happens. But when it does happen, you don't throw yourself into the fire like an Indian widow. You acquire another family. When are you going to learn that, Major? How 
was your friend. I... Uh, I got a pass for tonight, so I thought... Move over, Irene. Move over. Back to London. Would you care where we went? No, as long as we go together. With my life. So do they. What? Trust me. Veil. Pitting. Trusted me. I should have checked the oxygen system. Oh, my God. From meteorology? No. The weather has lifted over eastern Belgium. Ceiling unlimited. You'll take three squadrons into Maastricht at 8,000 feet. Now, will you go with Denver and Cobb, or shall I ask Colonel Chandler to take over the 918th and lead in your place? General? back in action in a month or two. Denver was over his first hurdle the minute he was able to face the truth about himself, Warner. That could be a very painful business, can't it, Frank? What? Deciding what the truth is and sticking to it. I just talked to Colonel Chandler. You fly your alternate briefing tomorrow morning. Maastricht has been postponed until you've decided the uh, odds are right again. Thanks, Wally. It won't be too long. I had my eye on some young officers. Good man. Potential leaders. Yes. Oh. 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 